Over the last decade, I've worked on a lot of different projects in a lot of different places. But there's one that really stands out, Tabula Rasa Farms in Oregon. This is a project where we've been continuing to come back to work year after year. And because of this continual input of energy, time, care, and maintenance, this project has really been able to move forward in just the half a decade that we've been working together. And so when we first worked on this project, we were first redoing an old pond, a pond that had been done that wasn't really performing well. Uh, and so recreating that pond and also taking a bunch of problem areas on that project and turning them into areas that were really helpful to the watershed. There was some severe erosion, some head cut erosion along the waterway that was continuing to get worse, claiming trees on the banks, leading to a lot of sedimentation in the waterway. And so we did a number of beaver mimicry features of small interventions to help hold and infiltrate that water into the ground. So in addition to this first pond, we also really created these areas that became incredible habitat for wildlife. They hold water almost throughout the year. Some of them now do hold water throughout the year. Incredible habitat for tadpoles and wildlife. And so it's been really wonderful to see this transformation unfold. Then year after year, we've been continuing to make more decentralized water retention on this landscape. So the following year, we built a water body where it was a seasonal spring that was eroding the road, making it quite hard to navigate. And we turned again this problem into this asset for the farm, drinking water for animals and helping to hydrate the ground. In addition, we really started to develop a network of terraces to move the water back and forth across the landscape. And so in one of the areas that was one of the poorest, lowest quality pastures, they went from being able to graze one time per year to being able to graze three or four times per year. So you think about the amount of difference this makes to a farm, having to put less inputs into the animals, less inputs into the landscape, just by capturing and storing that seasonal water. The subsequent year, we created more water bodies that in an area that was really getting all of the runoff and huge sedimentation from the neighbor's properties upstream. These properties have been clear cut, and so there was an incredible amount of sediment washing down every year. So these water bodies helped store the water, helped recharge the spring, create it more perennial throughout the year, and also catch all of that sediment and prevent it from going into the waterways. Now really interesting, every day we were passing some of our previous work, walking up to the area of this water body, and every day we would see a blue heron eating all of the frogs and tadpoles from one of the water bodies that we had previously created. Now this animal would not have been here in this landscape beforehand. There was no habitat, no food, no area for it. But because we made the space, the wild animals returned. And in the subsequent year, we created a really big intervention in this dry, eroding gully that had previously been used as a racetrack and a mud track for utility vehicles, running up the sides, creating severe erosion, mowing it really low. So this landscape was really parched and dry all summer long and then quite muddy during the winter. So in this area, we created another decentralized water retention landscape, a network of five interconnected ponds in the main valley, another pond in the woodlands, and terracing systems to move this water back and forth. And so now in this area that there was this dry, eroding waterway, we now have an abundance of water throughout the year. We're circulating that water from the bottom pond up to the top and really making this rich, abundant habitat. Now really interesting, as part of this project, we tapped a spring on the hillside. At the time that we tapped this spring, it was producing about one to two liters per minute. So very little water. Now, additionally, we tapped another spring that wasn't below our infiltration features, but was rather in an isolated area. So this functions as a control more or less for our impact on this spring. That spring was also at about a liter or two per minute. And that spring remains at that liter or two per minute. 
Now the spring in our project area that's been benefiting from all of this extra recharge of the aquifer now flows between 30 and 60 liters per minute. So we've really created this huge amount of increase in the flow and availability of water in this area by this decentralized retention landscape. So it's really incredible to return to this area, to see the abundance of life that now happens there, and to see the persistence of water throughout the year. It's a really amazing example of what's possible when we humans partner with nature and partner with water in order to create a better common future.